Your Excellency's uh, board, thank you so much for uh, agreeing to have me and the Vienna NGO Committee uh, also for selecting me as one of the speakers today. Uh, I'm very um, humbled to be in front of you. I have utmost respect for the International Narcotics Control Board. I think we're in some very challenging times right now with a small group of, of uh, organizations that are really pushing for the legalization of the non-medical use of all drugs, uh, not just cannabis, but of course, having started with cannabis. Uh, I am a former three-time White House drug policy advisor and um, have um, been able to represent the United States at the commission numerous times. Uh, I'm currently um, not in government. I am the president and CEO of SAM, Smart Approaches to Marijuana, as well as uh, affiliated with Yale Medical School. Uh, I'm going to present to you a few slides um, that I think capture some of the data that we have been seeing mainly in the United States with regards to our now 10-year uh, experiment, you can call it, um, of the legalization of cannabis. Of course, it's not really an experiment because we're not really um, following the data like we should, but, but some people will call it that. I think it's important to understand that three separate issues are often conflated. Uh, and that's, of course, the decriminalization or the sort of issue of do we penalize drug users? And of course, we know that under the three conventions, um, there is wide latitude among uh, countries, among nations and signatories in terms of how they want to uh, treat individual users. That, of course, is very different than the medicinal uh, use and the legitimate medicinal use or for research purposes, which of course the conventions have a clear um, delineation for. And then really the third issue is the main issue I think we're talking about today, the legalization and commercialization of the sales, use and manufacture of illicit substances. And again, I'm gonna draw the experiences from the United States with cannabis because when we legalize, when some states legalize cannabis here in the US, um, we saw the explosion of products, uh, very high in potency. Um, no state really has yet to be able to, uh, you know, successfully limit that potency. Uh, and we're now seeing the, you know, the kinds and types of cannabis that we never saw on the illicit market. This is only a product of the commercialization. So I think that's one particular issue we need to remember is that when any drug is commercialized and legalized, the marketplace is able to innovate when it's above board and it's able to innovate and create new products that are frankly more addictive maybe than some of the products on the illicit market and it really reckons in in my mind in the united states right now to the early days of big tobacco uh, when you look a hundred years ago what big tobacco was saying the case they were making um, to the population we see a similar case that big marijuana is making mainly we don't know what's, what the research says. Um, it's probably good for you. There's no reason why you shouldn't use. These are actually very similar arguments that the marijuana industry is doing. And now we've basically seen that the tobacco industry has morphed into the big marijuana industry. It's the same players, um, major, major um, international global companies that are, um, that are uh, out there buying the marijuana companies. And again, it's following this addiction for profit model. And that's really the model that you have to follow if you are, if you've legalized drugs, because the more money you make, you will make it from those who use your product the most. So you're not going to make money from occasional users. And in fact, in Colorado, we know that 30% of the users consume 87% of the volume of cannabis. So again, you don't need everyone to consume a lot, but you need a you know, significant proportion, even minority, to be the regular consumers. And that's addiction for profit, that, that, because they are profiting off of that addiction. And in the United States, we've seen the number of daily, non-daily users skyrocket. In fact, the proportion of daily users of cannabis among past month users uh, is close to 50%. That, that's astonishing. It's much higher than the number for alcohol. Uh, and it's really higher than the number for any other drug. We've seen around 14 to 16 million, and that's conservative, daily cannabis users, an explosion of daily use in the US. That's really where we've seen the increase, not among sort of occasional users, but among daily users. And we're seeing why, I mean, we have an industry that's completely targeting our youth with um, you know, coupons and billboards and advertisements. And of course we know that you know, some countries have been able to limit advertisements, let's say, of tobacco, but other countries uh, have not. Um, we're seeing increases in hospitalizations. 
uh, in multiple states, these are just a few, we are seeing a very small proportion of, um, of uh, tax revenue is going is part of the budgets. So in all of these states and, and others, it's really less than 1% um, of, the, of the budgets it ha has to do with cannabis. So this isn't like we are legalizing it, regulating it, and we're able to pay for more programs as a result because it's so minuscule. Um, what we have seen is an increase, for example, in workplace positivity of THC ever since these states legalized cannabis. So we're seeing more problems at the workplace. We're seeing more accidents at the workplace. We're seeing more car crashes on the roads. And that's why the largest traffic safety organization in the United States, the AAA Automobile Agency, opposes the legalization of marijuana for what they call recreational use because of the inherent traffic safety risks. And so we've seen these increases. We've also seen increases in calls to poison control centers, you know, poison centers uh, in multiple states that have legalized. So you actually have to put more resources into the staffing there. And we're seeing that although there's been a downward trend in overall youth substance use, especially in the United States, study after study is showing that legalization is actually reversing that downward trend. Um, <clears throat> some people will try and tell you that we haven't seen an increase in use uh, as a result of legalization, but I don't think the data bears that out at all. In fact, the daily use among 12th graders, uh, high school seniors in the United States has risen dramatically since we've started to legalize drugs. Um, we have studies showing the prevalence of marijuana use disorder in children age 12 to 17 has increased by 25% after recreational legalization. Uh, we have multiple uh, states that have shown increases, significant increases in youth marijuana use. Uh, in, you know, in the last few years. And we have studies now showing that the opioid crisis appears to be worsening where marijuana has been legalized. This was in the JAMA internal medicine. Um, as I was referring to earlier, marijuana impaired driving fatalities are skyrocketing. So we are seeing the early effects. I mean, again, after about 10 years in Colorado and Washington, about eight years in Oregon and Alaska, and about six years in states like California, and Massachusetts, we are seeing this effect. And of course, we know that it doesn't stop with cannabis. So the same groups that have legalized marijuana have now moved towards what they're calling decriminalization, but is really legalization, at least of possession um, in places like Oregon. They're also moving on to the psychedelics, what they're calling medical psilocybin, um, what they're, you know, and, and, and they're also um, allowing injection sites uh, in, 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 as a next step, as well as a push to legalize overall uh, the psychedelics. And I think that really is the next frontier. It's the psychedelics, it's heroin, um, it's uh, uh, other drugs that this does not stop with cannabis. So we've seen, of course, um, you know, self-appointed commissions uh, uh, that talk about how we need a new approach. Um, and that new approach uh, is, is sounds very nice. It's wrapped in very nice rhetoric, but in reality uh, is, I think, a very dangerous one. And it's one that we've seen already early data showing. Um, we've seen some places in the world, like in, in British Columbia, we've seen the um, this concept of the safe supply of drugs. So they're calling it a medical supply, even if it's for really for non-medical use. Um, and this, this is, uh, for example, heroin that's being passed out openly not stopped by the authorities at all in Canada. I think we have to really go back to the solutions that we know can work if we scale them up. Um, prevention, intervention and treatment, recovery, smart enforcement, and of course, international cooperation, international interdiction, international efforts. Uh, I very much worry about this push to legitimize uh, drugs. Um, you can get many more resources like our lessons learned document which is on our website at www.learnaboutsam.org. Uh, and of course, if any of you um, would like to reach out, my email personally is kevin at learnaboutsam.org. Uh, but again, I just have to say that we remain um, you know, very, very worried uh, about the legitimization and the commercialization of drugs. We've seen that, by the way, the illicit market has not gone away. The illicit market is thriving in legal states because you're able to undercut the legal price um, and be open whenever you want and not have a license. The other thing we've seen that I'm very worried about is um, really non-existent regulation, um, how states are completely ill-equipped to ensure safety and labeling and product assurances 
um, a very large, the largest ever study came out this week about Colorado mislabeling and about how when you actually went through the products, you saw that it didn't represent anything um, that it was being purported to represent when it was, you know, when the state was selling it. So I remain very concerned about cannabis and concerned about the other drugs that are just right behind in line. Uh, and I think it's increasingly important, especially important for international organizations and bodies like yourselves to reiterate public health and safety messaging and move away from the legitimization and commercialization of drugs. Thank you very much for uh, listening to me and I wish you a, a very productive meeting. Thank you.